the entrance antiphon for the Sunday Mass from the book of Jeremiah. The Lord said, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me and I will answer you, and I will lead back your captives from every place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sin and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. <clears throat> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers to, the ply, to ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gate. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. 
For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called to his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to a third one. In according in e- to each according to their ability. Then he went away. After a long time, the master of these servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing an additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents, so I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share in your master's joy. The Gospel of the Lord. You may recall that just a couple of Sundays ago was November the 1st. And in the life of our church, that's always a special day, whether it's on a Sunday or during the weekday, as I mentioned, that's All Saints Day. And we remember and celebrate those uh, who were here on earth with us, who have laid down their earthly bodies and have now uh, joined God in the joys and the perfection and the beauty of heaven forever. And how what they have with God, they pray for us, and we pray for and with one another, that we too may become saints one day with God, and all the angels and saints with him forever in heaven. Also, too, the next day is November 2nd, of course, after November the 1st, and that traditionally is All Souls Day. And we remember on that day in particular, uh, those are family members or friends or loved ones who have laid down their uh, earthly bodies and are on their way home to heaven or who may be uh, being cleansed uh, in purgatory. Our prayers and intercession help them just as the prayers and intercession of heaven help us here on earth. Again, we are one family in the body of Christ. Heaven and earth are united and prayer is powerful and important whether it's from heaven or from here uh, on the face of this earth. We pray for and with each other constantly every day, whether we're living or whether we have passed away. When we pass away, our souls live on forever and we still are connected to each other uh, physically and spiritually. Prayer is so powerful. And you know, we never forget those uh, who have died, our family members, our friends, Uh, our loved ones, whoever they may be. Their memories live forever in the depths of our minds uh, and our hearts. We think about them, we cherish them, we miss them, we pray for and with them. Bringing a visual to this great tradition of our church, uh, our Spanish-speaking community 
will bring pictures of their loved ones or friends who have died. And during the Mass, especially around All Souls Day, they will bring those pictures and place them here around the altar, around the table of the Lord. Again, a visual of uh, a reminder that even though uh, our loved ones may have passed on, their hearts and souls live forever and their memories do in our minds and hearts. We never forget them and we still love them and we miss them. And we pray for them, placing them into the hands of God. Beautiful visual of bringing our faith alive, of bringing pictures of our loved ones and placing them here close to the altar of God where we place them in God's hands in the prayer and the beauty and the power of the Mass. I remember as a child growing up in my home parish in Owensboro, uh, it was a tradition for the whole faith community to bring pictures of their loved ones who have passed on. And they would be displayed not just one day there for November the 2nd, but throughout the entire month of November. And you would see their pictures on the steps of the sanctuary or in the window seals uh, with the grand windows that line that beautiful church. You would be reminded throughout the month of November uh, that we still pray for and with them because the month of November is devoted especially to the holy souls in the tradition of our faith uh, in our church. So yes, All Souls Day is very special and important on November the 2nd, but another treasury of the wisdom of our faith in our church is that we devote the entire month of November to the holy souls especially. But of course, every day throughout the year, our loved ones are prayed for in the grace of the Mass because we remember those who have died every time Mass is celebrated. So pictures and visuals, reminders of our loved ones who have gone before us, uh, placing them close to the altar or here in the house of God, whether it's through the window seals or on the steps of the sanctuary. Visuals of our faith, reminders of who we are as Catholic Christians, that heaven and earth are united, and that we pray for and with one another every day, especially during the month of November, um, for those who have died. And when they are home in heaven, they pray for and with us too. The, all, the end goal of all of this is to be in communion with one another and with God. God calls all people to himself each and every day to be one with him in faith, hope, and love and Christian charity. And we pray that we may draw ever closer to God every day and that our loved ones may see him face to face uh, in heaven. Again, I'm gonna take a little walk here just to remind us that throughout the month of November, we have a little book that we can write the names of our loved ones. Uh, and in the mass, whether it's on Sunday or during the week, they will be remembered here at God's altar in the grace of the mass. So if you are worshiping from home, I'm taking a little field trip. I know you can't see it, but you can hear me. And I am going to go back by the Guadalupe statue where the candles are burning and the Book of Intentions are there and the Juan Diego statue is there. But we also have a special Book of the Dead that is there where you can write the names of your loved ones and they'll be remembered in the Mass uh, every day uh, during the month of November. And if you are ever out and about, and this goes for any of us, if you're ever out and about and want to stop by the church when it's open and write the names of your loved ones in that book, they are remembered in the Mass uh, every time it's celebrated in the month of November. So just to give us a little visual of what I'm talking about, normally we have the book in the gathering space, of course, um, not too far away from the Christ candle, but with the COVID restrictions and everything set up differently, we've now moved uh, what's called the Book of the Dead or the Book of the Holy Souls right back here. Uh, over here, of course, is the Book of Intentions, and you can light your candles over here. And then not too far away, in this little binder, it says, In Loving Memory Of. Uh, this is where you may write in anybody that you know, family member, friend, or loved one who has passed on in this book throughout uh, the course of the rest of this month. Uh, we've already got pages and pages of names. I know this parish is very good about remembering those who have gone before us. Every year we fill this book up with names of people who have passed on. We pray for and with them every day. 
that they may, they may be with God forever in heaven and see him face to face in the joys uh, that heaven offers. So if you ever want to take a few minutes to think about your family members or friends or loved ones who have died and take a minute or two and write their names in this book. And then uh, every time that I celebrate mass here at St. Leo's during the month of November, whether it's on Sunday or through the week, of course, it's all kind of the same thing now with COVID. Uh, they will be remembered here at the altar of God and they will be lifted up to the Lord and we will place them especially uh, into his hands, asking for his grace uh, and his mercy uh, and his peace. You know, as I said, God calls all of us to himself. He wants us to be with him. He wants us to have peace. He wants us to have joy. He wants us to have eternal life and bliss and joy and happiness with him forever in heaven. So as we continue through the month of November, we remember the souls who have gone before us. We place them into the hands of God in this mass and all the masses of November and all the prayers that we offer for them and with them, that they may see God forever face to face in heaven and that they will pray for us and that you and me and all of us will be with God forever, reunited as a faith family one day in heaven. Amen. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Grateful for all the gifts we have been given, we ask for the help we need to serve God faithfully as we offer him our prayers. For church leaders, may God look graciously upon them as they faithfully steward the riches he has entrusted to them. We pray to the Lord. For the world, may the Lord guide us with wisdom in our role as stewards of the resources of this earth. We pray to the Lord. For those who experience the pain of separation and divorce, may the love of God sustain them through every trial. We pray to the Lord. For our faith community, may the Holy Spirit grant us courage and strength as we live our call to discipleship. We pray to the Lord. And for those who have died, especially the names of those written in the book of the dead, may the Lord's mercy grant them eternal rest in heaven. We pray to the Lord. And for all the prayers we hold now in the silence of our hearts. And to all the prayers written in the book of intentions, we pray to the Lord. God of all good gifts, we know that you are with us as we answer your call to act boldly in your service. Hear the prayers we offer today through Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing to God the Father Almighty. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ the Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, bless Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, 
the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, our merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, a form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the communion antiphon from the Gospel of Mark. Amen, I say to you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you will receive, and it shall be given to you, says the Lord. For those of us worshiping from home and cannot now receive Jesus in Holy Communion at the church, we offer this act of spiritual communion that God will come into your heart and your soul. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
as I mentioned last weekend, we always have two great things we do here at St. Leo to help those in need in our community in the holiday season. First was the mashed potato boxes that I announced last weekend. Uh, we we're already receiving lots of boxes of potatoes and I'm not surprised and I think that's great and that's awesome. So please continue to bring those in uh, here to church whenever we're open or you can drop them off at Needline and ask them to credit St. Leo so they'll have the appropriate count and we'll continue taking those uh, until uh, Sunday, December the 6th. Also, the second great thing that we do here at St. Leo every holiday season is our giving tree where we help the kids in need in our community as well to have a nice Christmas. Well, with COVID, of course, there's some different guidelines. Uh, we can't have a, we don't really have room right now for a giving tree in the gathering space, and I can't allow people to gather around the tree in groups together to pick out a tag and then to bring a Christmas present back. And some people may not be comfortable going out to shop right now amongst crowds, and I completely understand that. So the city and county school system that we help out in this project has come up with some changes and some guidelines I'd like to pass along to you to where they can still help those in our community uh, in need, especially little ones that have a good Christmas uh, this year. Uh, you will find a little basket on the countertop in the gathering space uh, that's for the giving tree. And rather than uh, having a tree and getting presents and, and things to bring back, what the school system is asking us to do this year is that if you would like to make a monetary donation uh, for these and then the school system themselves have a system worked out that they will take that money and go get the presents and get those to the families that need it. So now through December the 6th, uh, if you'd like to donate toward that cause, there's a basket there on the countertop in the gathering space. Uh, cash is acceptable or if you make out a check, we just ask that you make it out to St. Leo and put in the memo line a giving tree. We will collect those for the next several weeks until December the 6th. And then when that deadline has come, we will take whatever we have gathered here at St. Leo and divide that up evenly between the city and the county school system. And they in turn will take care of getting presents for the little ones in their schools uh, that are in need. So despite uh, uh, the guidelines and the changes, we're still able to do great things and make this a beautiful holiday season uh, for so many. And we need all the goodness and the grace and the kindness that we can get this year. So I have no doubt St. Leo will do well in both of these areas as we do every single year. So there's more details in the bulletin uh, on both of these matters if you'd like to take a bulletin and read about it. Also too, coming up very soon, it's hard to believe, is Thanksgiving Day, uh, November the 26th. I will be offering mass at 8 a.m. in the morning here in the church on Thanksgiving morning. If you would like to come that day and give thanks to God for all the blessings he's given us, especially in the midst of a very trying year. And yes, there are many blessings to be had, many things to be thankful for, despite as crazy as this year has been. And there's no more powerful prayer than to offer thanksgiving to God and the ultimate act of thanksgiving, the Holy Eucharist here in the grace of the Mass. So know you're more than welcome for a Thanksgiving Mass, a Thanksgiving Day at 8 a.m. So God's graces and blessings to all of you and your family, and I hope that you have a good week coming up. Let us stand and pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of peace.